Today I'm going to give you some tips on my apple orchard. We are at the stage called petal fall, which is where the majority of the petals have fallen off of the flowers and new fruit is beginning to develop. This is a key time for the first significant insecticide application. Now the two major pests that we're trying to control at this time is one plum cocurlio and the second one is coddling moth. Now plum cocurlio is a small snout nose beetle that moves into the orchard shortly after petal fall. The females lay their eggs under the skin of apples, peaches, pears, and cherries, as well as plums, and then she makes kind of a crescent-shaped mark on the skin to help the young survive the rapid fruit growth. Now as the fruit enlarges, so does the damage area, which makes the fruit less desirable and, and less marketable. Although few larvae actually survive the tunnel into the fruit. Now, coddling moth is about a half inch long and it's kind of gray to brownish markings on the wings. And the females deposit their eggs on the fruits and they may feed on the outside of the fruit a bit, but usually they bore into the center and then they feed around the seed cavity. Now, in Michigan, plum cocurlio only has one generation that's from egg to adult stage. But coddling moth, we have at least two generations. So when we're trying to control these pests, we're going to focus in on trying to knock out the first generation so that we don't have to worry about a second generation of coddling moth. With uh, plum cocurlio, we're just trying to knock out the generation before it has a chance to do damage to the fruit. I prefer to apply my first insecticide application a day or two after petal fall. Since the plum cocurlio and coddling moth are both active at night, you're unlikely to see anything until damage starts to show up. Imidan 70 wettable powder is a very good product for both pests, although you'll have to buy it from a local farm elevator since it's difficult to find in less than four pound bags. And if you have just a couple of trees, uh, that's quite a bit of Imidan. When you spray, apply the material till it drips off the leaves and be sure to have good coverage, especially on the border rows, which are the first place they will go when they're migrating into the orchard from their overwintering sites. One of the things about applying Imidan is that it is pH sensitive. So it's a good idea to test your water source to find out what your pH is. Imidan works best when the water pH is acidic. So check with your local health department or university soil testing lab on how you can test your water. And the reason this is important, if your water is too alkaline, in other words, the pH is above seven, Imidan can break down so quickly that it may become ineffective within a matter of hours. And so you might think that I'm going to spray today and I'm good for about seven days. Not if the pH is too high, it won't. So you need to check that. Now the good thing to know is you can lower the pH of the water fairly inexpensively. You can go down to one of your local hydroponic supply stores and buy some phosphoric acid. And phosphoric acid is the same acid that you find in cola drinks. And if you add this to your water at one teaspoon per gallon of water, you can expect it to lower the pH of the water at least one unit, say from seven to six. Uh, for organic treatment, you might want to use Surround. This is a kaolin clay, a very fine kaolin clay product. And if you mix it with another product called Spinosad, you may get a boost in the control. The microfine clay in Surround coats the fruit when you spray it on, and it both irritates the insect and also makes the site less desirable for egg deposition. The drawback to using the clay is that, that it does not dissolve in water and must be kept in suspension by agitation. In other words, if you have a small spray, you have to keep shaking your tank every now and then. If you have a larger spray rig, you should have automatic agitation associated with your sprayer. Now, some people like to use commercially available home orchard spray mixtures. The insecticide ingredients in these materials is inferior and will not give you the same control that you can get from Imidan or say Surround and Spinosad. Now if you need to apply a fungicide for disease control at the same time, you can mix those materials together and spray them on. Regardless of what product you choose to use, don't miss the window or you will experience damage. And also don't forget to spray really early in the morning or late in the evening because the winds are calmer then and the bees won't be around and it'll be safer. And one final reminder, be sure you read all the label directions for the recommended personal protection equipment and be sure to use it so that you decrease your chances of being exposed to any pesticide. Those are the tips for today and I'll see you a little bit later.
Thank you.